out of your shoulders. So I'm a little sick. Please excuse any sniffling or snuffling you may hear during the video. But you know what? It's okay. I have a tea. I've eaten a whole package of cough drops in the last two hours. I'm hyped up on too much coffee and whatever was in the strawberries that I had for breakfast this morning because there's no way that those were not GMO'd for how big they were this far out of season. So there's a cocktail of fun things racing through my blood and it's making me want to film a book haul. Let me tell you, I went in on books in the last, I guess this is kind of like the last month and a half. Um, so I pay my visa bill in full every month, so none of you have to worry about it. But like the amount of books, they're on my side table right now, just, this is too much for polite society. Like, I'm going to book jail. In last week's video, I threatened slash promised to do a book haul, but I always make good on my threats and keep my promises. So without further ado, grab a drink, grab a snack, and buckle up, bestie. We're gonna do a good old fashioned, ridiculously large book haul. Also, a slight disclaimer, Half these books I wanna talk about, I did not pay for myself. I was sent them by the publisher and I will tell you which ones were which, uh, but I wanted to include them because these are the books that even if I had not got them sent to me, I would have bought them anyway. Like this first one, which is The Dark Rise by C.S. Paquette. And this was sent to me in a wonderful package from Sourcebooks that we will hear about again later. I'm about halfway through it right now and it brings me back to the good old OG YA era. This is about a boy named Will in the 1810s who finds out that he is a chosen one, descendant of basically the people of the light who are always fighting against the dark king who is now rising again. It's a bit of a lower YA, lower fantasy, very Lord of the Rings-esque, but it gives a good twist on those original tropes like the chosen one or the I'm not like other girls girl or oh there is a world beside our own. It's easy to read. I'm having fun with this and it's making me want to collect more swords. Now usually when I do book hauls I don't don't include ones that I've already read because those are gonna go in my end of the month wrap-ups, but I'm breaking my own rules for TJ Klune because I just finished Under the Whispering Door and it was so good! This book had the nerve to make me cry on public transit. This is a lovely whimsical book that deals with the heavy topic of death where our main character Wallace is a man who dies and whose soul ends up going to Karen's tea house which is kind of an in-between place for spirits and then we figure out what life really means and what death really means. There's this big found family, both of the living and the dead. If death or topics surrounding death are triggering to you, maybe don't pick this up. But at the same time, I also felt like it was quite therapeutic. TJ Clue does it again. I really, really love this book. And you can bet that I will be uh, fangirling about it a lot in my monthly wrap up. This next one is one of my most anticipated sequels of the year. And I'm so glad to finally have it in my hands. I walked a whole 20 minutes in the pouring rain to pick this up from the FedEx office. <sighs> And that is When Night Breaks by Janelle Ann Hillis. <laughs> this is the sequel to Where Dreams Descend, which is a magical circusy book. And y'all know me, if a book is about magic circuses, I'm gonna buy it. Like if you write, Rachel will buy any magical circus book, you take that to the bank and that check will cash. The first book had some great strong characters, a very tension filled rivals to lovers plot line, wonderful friendship dynamics and mirror magic. Also, this cover is so damn beautiful and it just gets better the longer you look at it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I look at the, it truly it's like head empty, no thoughts. It's so pretty. Another sequel that I'm very excited about getting is Kingdom of the Cursed, which is the sequel to Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco. Italian inspired fantasy world with witches and demons where our main character is trying to work with a demon king to track down who killed her sister. Kingdom of the Wicked was definitely an upper YA from the amount of sexual tension that it had. Like the main character is 18, it's fine. And from what I've heard from my friends on book talk this book is like 90% sexy times and 10% plot lines so it's like vibe check going to hell and like am I mad at that no like if my options are murder mystery or sexy demon princes I'm gonna go with option B plus this book has a map and you know I'm a sucker for a book with a map. <laughs> and then circling around back to magic circuses, I got another magic circus book and that is book, book of root, Bo what? The Bones of Ruin by Sarah Raleigh. This girl looks like she could beat me up and I would thank her for it. Iris is an African tightrope walker in Victorian London, part of this circus of curiosities who has two secrets. She has no memory of her past and she cannot die. This plot line gets real squirrely real fast because she is then recruited by this white man into a tournament called the Tournament of Freaks 
and whoever wins gets to help plan the apocalypse. <laughs> Which, like, talk about hireable extracurricular activities. <laughs> Mom? Sorry. Well, editing Rachel keep that in. <laughs> I don't know. And now we are returning to the lovely package that Sourcebook sent me because they know how to treat a girl right, let me tell you. In that package, I also got one of my most anticipated books of this year, which was The Keeper of Night by Kylie Lee Baker. Our main character is a half reaper, half Shinigami soul collector in 1890 Japan trying to find her destiny. Bitch. Like, all books from here on out are cancelled. This is the best we're ever gonna get. <laughs> Our main character, Ren, is a soul collector who's half Japanese and half white and dealing with the Reaper hierarchy and racial tensions that are happening at the beginning of the century. We're in a magical Victorian London, killing demons and making deals with death. And if I'm known for loving anything, it's that. Kylie Lee Baker, are you gonna, like, make my dreams come true? Or, like, what? <laughs> Another lovely PR package I got sent was one from Simon and Schuster, who sent me a copy of Vespertine by Margaret Rogerson. I really like Margaret Rogerson's writing style and this one is about nuns with death magic and truly I can't think of another religion that I would rather subscribe to. Our main character Artemisia is a magical mortician nun who prepares the bodies of the dead because if she doesn't do it properly then they're gonna rise up as these zombie remnants. But then the zombies attack the covent. Covent? Convent? Con I think convent is the <laughs> Revoke my English degree. I just looked it up. It's in fact convent. So when the convent is attacked by remnants, she releases this ancient spirit by accident, of course, which is easy to do, I guess. And the only type of gray sister priestess that can return the spooky ancient spirit uh, is a vespertine, and apparently those don't exist anymore, so she goes on this big journey of self-discovery to go and find one. And man, doesn't that sound like a rough work day. I've made a lot of mistakes in my day job, but at least I've never released a magic spirit hell-bent on destroying the universe, and even if I did, the IT department would take care of it. Also, our main character is a burn victim and has no ability to use her hands. So I'm interested to see how that disability plays into this, and I love seeing more disability representation in high fantasy. All right, we need a tea break. Hmm. Nice. It's been raining non-stop for the last week and a half and I am in my element. I'm drinking so much tea. I've taken out all my sweaters from the back of my closet. I am thriving. <laughs> okay, next. I bought two books that are kind of the same, but I don't think this is a bad thing because like all bookworms, I like a book that is similar to a book I've already read. Uh, just a little different. <laughs> this is the equivalent of liking a piece of clothing, so you buy it in six colors. The two books in question are Dark and Shallow Lies by Ginny Meyer Sands and The River Has Teeth by Erica Waters. If I could wallpaper my apartment in just these two book covers, I would. Okay, let's talk about this one first. I read the first chapter of this and it felt like stepping into a lake with boots that are too short and so all the water and the muck gets in but like in a good way. What even is this metaphor? The tiny town of La Cachette, Louisiana is the psychic capital of the world, where our main character, Gray, doesn't believe that an entire town of psychics can't figure out why her best friend went missing last summer. With the help of the mysterious boy, good, Gray dives into the bloody history of the town and learns that more people are keeping secrets than they ever thought. This is giving me that very particular scene in the first Lord of the Rings movie when Gollum is taking Frodo and Sam through the marshes uh, on their way to Mordor and there's the dead people under the marsh water because of the battle fought there long ago and both elves and men. But the vibe is particularly the moment that Frodo falls in and then there's like the ghosts that come up and like the don't follow the lights. That very particular moment. That's the vibe this book is giving me. Okay, so actually this book is like almost nothing like this book, but they, they feel the same. So that's enough for me. This one is less mystery in the swamp and more monster in the forest, but my friend Megan, who likes horror books, recommended it and like anything she says is good, I'll buy. Megan, please use that power that you know you have over me responsibly. Natasha's sister goes missing on the edge of a nature reserve, so she goes to Della's family, who are a family of witches, and asks for her help with the monster in the forest, and the monster may also be part of of the witch clan under a curse. What? Ooh, it's spooky and creepy and witchy and sapphic, which is anything I could ever want in a book. So the jacket art of this book is by uh, Chervelle Fryer, but the jacket design is by Jenna Stampo Lobel. And uh, Jenna, if you ever want to just like hang out, be friends, design my life, whatever, 
call me. Okay, so you know I just said how I, my friend Megan made me want to read this. I think I have a book that she's gonna want to read, so here we are enabling each other. Because I bought Star Eater by Kristen Hall, which is apparently a horror fantasy full of female cults that may also have cannibalism. And if that doesn't scream fall to you, I don't know what does. We got a floating city on a continent full of monsters and some weird sounding fertility cults. I mean, like children are possibly the most terrifying thing I can think of. Where our main character, Alfreda, is a priestess in this order. Then she gets approached by a shadowy faction who asks her to spy on the priesthood. Oh my God, what's actually happening behind the scenes? The government's been lying to us. Maybe there's a dark God that will consume us all? That mixed with taking down the patriarchy and fighting for the right to your own body and female rage. This sounds really fucked up, so I hope it's good. Oh my god, we're almost done. Okay, I have two more to talk about. Honestly, I'm a little surprised that I'm still going off of that one coffee I had this morning, um, but then again, it was in a mug that was the size of my head, so. My most recent acquisition is the Chinese fantasy that is Jade Fire Gold by June Tan. An has no memory of her past, but when it turns out she has dangerous magic power, she's taken to the Imperial Palace to await her fate. Whereas Altan is an heir to a disgraced family and is now fighting for vengeance in any way he can. So as you can imagine, the two of them meet and then fall in love and move away to a continent to start a, a little bakery together and like never think of dark magic again. Ha! Now the two of them meet and then form an alliance to take down the throne with dark magic, obviously. Now I have seen some criticism on the internet of Jun Tan because of her depiction of a Chinese fantasy system. And as I have not read this, I have to say apparently there are depictions of stereotypes and she made up some Chinese words for Chinese places. But this sparked a big debate online of not letting POC authors get away with the same things that white authors do. For example, the term Mordor is a fake place, but she's arguing that, well, why can't she make up a name in Chinese? And because she is actually Chinese, she can make up whatever Chinese fantasy world that she wants. Personally, I haven't seen too many Asian people in the book community talking about this, so I'm not quite sure how to weigh in yet. So unless it comes out that she's a terrible person and the Asian community like denounces her, I'm still probably gonna read this book because it sounds fucking cool as hell. Okay, and lastly, we're gonna wrap this up with a book series that I never thought that I would return to, but here we are. Once again, Source Books came through and they <laughs> sent me a PR package of the entire Touch of Darkness series. The only thing I like better than a Hades and Persephone retelling is a smutty Hades and Persephone retelling. So they sent me Touch of Darkness, Touch of Malice, Touch of Ruin, and a Game of Fate, which is, I believe, the first book from the other main character's perspective. If you've been with me for a while, you know I have already read Scarlet St. Clair's first book of the series because I'm on a never-ending journey to find good Hades and Persephone retellings. Man, you guys, it's an endeavor, and I promise the Hades and Persephone video will be coming. <laughs> you know what else is coming? I remember thinking that this book was very dumb and very fun. <laughs> now that I have the whole series, I feel like I have to read it. <laughs> So I'm just gonna have like a real fun, I guess, smutty November when I eventually pick this up. All right, we made it. Okay, so I want you to look at this. Does this look like a book haul of somebody who is mentally stable? No, exactly. You know you're in the presence of illness. Oh god. Oh, I just strained something. Oh my god, I'm gonna be sore tomorrow. So that was that. I hope you enjoyed my book haul because I sure did. When am I gonna get to read all these? I don't know, that's a problem for later, Rachel. Every time I'm like, I'm not gonna buy another book until I finish at least two in my TBR pile, it doesn't happen, I'm weak. When a book has a shiny cover and promises me a good time with like a demon king or some sapphic witches, I feel rude not picking it up and taking it home with me, you know? Please leave down below if you yourself have read or bought any of these ones or like which ones I should, no. Don't tell me which ones I should get next. I already have a list. I don't need to be adding more to it. I need some kind of self-control. Full disclosure, probably not gonna happen this year, but if a girl can dream, you know where to click like the video. You know where to click the subscribe. I hope you guys are all having a nice day wherever you are and I will see you all next week. Bye.